Hello, hope you're all well. Um, yeah, just repairing another Bose board and these uh, quasi resonant uh, half bridge switch mode power supplies. All the power is goes through this capacitor. This is in series with the uh, the primary winding, and it's a common problem. And this is a Nepcos. It's a good capacitor, 100 nanofarad, 400 volt DC working. And if I just the thing was trying to start up and it just can get enough oomph through the uh, system. If I turn the voltage up it would start just about but then collapse when I try to pull some load on the DC side. If I just, you can see the nanofarad reading there, if I just measure this, stop my meter moving. See, it's open circuit pretty much. Making contact there. So nothing working in here in this capacitor. It's completely open circuit, and I was just wondering why. Because the, why they go? Uh, if I get a brand new part here and measure it, get contact. You can see we've got 97 nanofarad there on the uh, the old DM 100C. Good meter actually. I'm going to do another review of this after I've been using this daily for six months. I did the initial review when I received it after a couple of weeks, but. I've done mains wiring and I've wired up a workshop and using it and using the live features and I'll, I'll do a bit of an update so um, to see what, tell you what I've discovered. But anyway, back onto this capacitor. So this little Johnny is open circuit. So I wonder if we can just open it up and have a look inside and one and uh, not wonder but find out why why it's not playing ball. Oh, not good, eh? Not good. Epcos, you'd think an Epcos one would just carry on chooching forever because, uh, you know, they're not cheap, are they? Let's face it. So I want to get the tools out and um, crack this thing open and see if we can ascertain without damaging it what might be the problem. They are um, self-healing, so it might have healed its way to, into oblivion. So if we unwrap the foil, we can have a look, see if the wires come off the end or what's happened to it. So one moment, I'll just get the tool out. OK, we're now facing the jaws of death. Gonna give this thing a bit of a hot supper and see if we can get her open or not. What do you think? What do you reckon our chances are? So take it all, and here we go. Try and top it. First of all, chop the top off. Get rid of the. Is this plastic case go all the way through? No, it doesn't actually, does it? Tighten her up a bit more. Goodbye, cruel world. Mm. So it's all very blobby and this blue stuff goes down, down, down. I've seen these split open before where they had a bit of an explosion inside. So they do come apart of their own volition. But shoving the high voltage power supply on it and blowing it up is not an option. Although it would make an interesting video, wouldn't it? Now we're getting to the insides of her there. You can see the... Uh, the foily bit sticking through, that's the end of the foil wrapping. And this is the bonding wire. It has the bonding wire come off. Talk amongst yourself. But this little capacitor failing has cost the uh, customer £60. So either it's a bonding wire fault, isn't it, or it's the foil has blown itself open. I'm thinking bonding wire at the moment. You know, my dad would have given me a clip round the ears if I'd use a pair of cutters like this. He was um, he did an apprenticeship at Rolls Royce, and uh, yeah, he didn't like tooling abuse. He said we was walking down the corridor one day eating an apple and the uh, one of the managers stopped him when he was doing his apprenticeship and uh, Dad thought he was going to be told off <laughs> eating an apple in the corridor. In actual fact what it was, the guy stopped him and said look there's a washer down there, that's a penny halfpenny or something, you've just walked straight past it. 
you should pick it up, find out what it is and put it back in stock. You can't just leave things on the floor. That was his bollocking he got. And uh, I'm sure that apprenticeship instilled a lot of discipline in his approach to things. Very disciplined man indeed. He wasn't strict though, but he was um, very loving and explanatory. He used to spend ages explaining things to me, which I promptly forgot because I was only interested in bicycles and girls at the time. But some of it must have rubbed off. Some of it must have rubbed off. Right, so we're not getting into this baby. I'll have to call out the cal oh, cavalry in a minute. Oh, that's a good noise. I like that noise, a cracking noise. Ah, oh, there we go. So skin off this side. There's going to be a minimal damage, but we're going to find out why she's gone open circuit on us. That's what we want to find out. Why did you have to die? I treated you well. Well, actually, no. The probably, actually, it, it's uh, most of these things die at the hands of mistreatment by the design engineer. Let's face it. Schoolboy designers, cocky little buggers. I don't really know what they're doing. Certainly wouldn't let them any of these um, domestic audio, especially designers. Not so much on the TV side. I think the Panasonic TVs and things like that are very good. But um, you wouldn't want to let any of these guys anywhere near an aircraft, electronics, or anything like that, or medical. People would be dying right at the centre because of stupid design faults that weren't properly tested. So we're getting into the heart of her now. Interesting that this bonding wire has come off. Can you see that imprint there where it's pressed on? I wonder if that had just come off. We'll never know now, but if we unroll this, and uh, if we manage to unroll this, I don't know where the end of the uh, tape ends there look, by the look of it. I think we should go into super macro zoom, don't you? We've got our knickers off. Right there, so there she blows. That's what we got inside there. That bonding wire is not convincingly bonded on the end of there, but it is pressurised onto the end foil, which is folded over. This one is much more... Well, probably not actually. I wouldn't say it's more convincingly attached, would you? Or would you? Leave a comment below. Bit of snippy snippy here. There we are. So you can see you can see the construction of it. You can see our roly poliness And... Uh, what went wrong? It's only these blue ones I've seen, you know, that fail. Epcos. So this is the outer wrapping, I think. I don't think we've reached the... Uh, no, is, is that metalised? Is that damage I've done those holes, do you think? I don't remember snipping that bit, but I could well have done. Let's explore more deeply and see what we can find, shall we? Look at that, it's got worrying holes in it, which I don't think I made. I didn't remember snipping along that bit. It doesn't even look that metalised, does it? Is that that incredibly thin metal layer, do you think? It has been a while, though. I mean, I haven't opened up a capacitor since I was a boy, frankly. And I was curious. Well, it is looking very metallic and shiny, even though the effect of one just a few layers of it. Don't look. End bit must be squished over. Oh look. We're getting more metalised now boys and girls. Oh here we are. We're, re we're reaching the main part of the show now. No pinholes or explosions in there. I wonder if it's conductive. We'll try that in a minute. Well, no sign of any particular damage. Is there no self-healing or punctures or electrical discharges which could have caused a problem? And I just noticed they're obviously like a rolls, rolls of uh, toilet paper and stuff where they join them on. This has just got to the end of that roll because it's not torn off. It's a clean break. And it starts off again. Anyone's guess where it starts off again? Clearly a new roller started because look at the way it's cut straight. Yeah, 
Here we go. Think about all these happen, all this working inside your uh, devices, all your electronic devices, and all your TV and stuff, with it. signals and decoupling happening across this tiny, tiny, thin film. I could measure the thickness of that film. I have to get my micrometer out though, because I don't think my vernier is going to appreciate that. That must be. What do you think? Could be a lot less than three microns. Do you think? Always well, amazing that 400 volts won't skip through this anywhere. Other ones I have them rolled have got great big pock marks in where the um, they've been sparking across and healing themselves until they heal themselves out of capacitance. The trouble is every time it happens the capacitance goes down and any electronics connected can get still not really be, you know, it could be subject to a transient. So. Well, I'm going to keep this for the Christmas tree, I think. Come on, focus, you focusing, focusing thing. I was working with my wife's bicycle yesterday. She said my chain's slipping. So we bought the bike from Halfords in the UK, and I said, well, go down, buy a new gear cassette buy a new chain, her chain was completely zonked, she does quite a lot of cycling she said my gear's slipping, I can't keep up with my friend who's got a new bike I said well let's fix yours unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately when you look at it at the moment there's, you can't get bicycles in the UK because, because of the lockdown everyone's sold out pretty much so um, I'm guessing that's the same in a lot of places anyway she comes back from Halfords about two hours later because there were some problems down in the local city with the traffic and uh, the Halfords girl who was on the although it legally had been a boy so the sex is relevant really had sold her the wrong cassette which didn't fit their own brand of bicycle by the way their Carrera ladies mountain bike is their own brand they sold her a gear cassette which is the only one they stock which didn't fit it was a free it should have been a freewheeling gear cassette you know the thing with the seven gears on the back and they sold her a chain which didn't fit, it was a 5 to 7 speed automatic um, derailleur chain and the pitch is different, for those of you who don't realise there's different pitches of chains and for things like the Shimano 7 speed um, cassette you need a specific type of HG chain it's called and so they sold the wrong chain and also the castellated spanner which goes into the cassette which unwinds it off the wheel didn't fit either. I had to turn it down in the lathe because it was 33.5 millimeters outer diameter across the top of the castellations. There's about 16 castellations, a round thing that goes around the outside of the axle and engages in the derailleur. And um, that didn't fit either. So I had to machine that down to get it off. And so, all in all, um, not great actually, not great at all. So, a completely wasted trip. Um, bye bye. Anyway, look, this is not going to go anywhere, is it? It's just all okay, I think. So obviously the uh, connection on the end of the component had failed, maybe, and that comes down to a certain degree um, to handling when during during production is the actual handling of the um, of the component in terms of stressing the legs. And uh, I used to work in an electronics factory. It's actually laminated. You can see that pulling that back. That was one layer is now laminated into two. So that's the conductive layer there. I think. Let's just check that and see. I'm going to zoom out a bit more. So, what have we got? Just see what the impedance is or the resistance, if you call it. Got nothing there. In the 10 meg range. So, we've got a, a, a clear um, insulating layer which you'd expect and then the underside that's uh, you can see my probes are let's put them a centimetre apart and we've got roughly you know, 
six ohms look and they are three or four millimeters apart at the end of the tape. So that gives you an idea. You've got obviously interleaved conductive um, vacuum coated plastic, presumably, it's sputtered on. But yeah, that one failed because of the leads come discharged from the end because there's nothing, long, nothing wrong with this bit. Much mylar polyester, I'm not sure which. And uh, yeah, so it was just handling. And I did notice the legs were bent out. And when it's been put through the board, the legs were quite bent out and I had to push them back to get the component out of the board. And presumably the act of bending those legs was enough to, with heating. And, I mean, it's been going for spot. 10, 11 years this thing uh, since it before it failed so yeah, you can draw your own conclusions but at some point through the expansion cycle or electrostatic uh, stresses clearly when a capacitor is conducting there is um, electrostatic forces inside and you know, actual mechanical force caused by the electric field between the electrodes and this is very peaky very spiky and uh, very high peak current application so you may have just um, at some point, just gave up the goat, and there it was. But I thought, I hope you find that interesting. I'll, um, if you can, just subscribe to that button down there, and uh, leave me a like, and hit the bell for notification. But you know, interesting or not, I don't know. But I was just curious, so I hope you enjoyed that. Stay safe.